Welcome to Blackthorn Prod. My name is Noah and today I will show you how to make an enemy AI that could be used in stealth games. As you can see, my enemy character is rotating around the scene with a line of sight poking out from between his two eyes. This line of sight is green when not in contact with anything, but as soon as it collides with something, for example the walls, it will turn red. For the purpose of this tutorial, I have gotten my player to destroy himself as soon as he is spotted by the enemy character. But of course you could instead get the enemy to start running after him or begin to shoot with his weapon. Also note that the line of sight method demonstrated in this video can easily be merged with other character behaviors. In short, you don't need your enemy simply rotating like I have done here for simplicity's sake, but instead have your character patrol around the environment or simply stand idle. I have made a bunch more AI tutorials on this channel, so if you need some inspiration or techniques to get your game characters feeling alive and fun, definitely have a look at those videos. With all of that said, let's get started. So as usual, I have a simple Unity scene set up with two walls that will act as cover and two circular characters. One red, he'll represent the nasty enemy, and of course, the blue circle is our player. I've gone ahead and put a simple 2D character controller script on the player, as well as a 2D rigid body. As a result, I can smoothly move him around the scene. You can of course learn how to do this with another one of my tutorials, and again, the link will be in the description. Okay, it's now time to bring our enemy to life. I'll create a new c -sharp script, call it enemy, and open it up. First of all, let's get him rotating around the scene. I'll make a public float variable called rotation speed, and then in my update function, I'll actually get him to rotate by typing transform.rotate, and in the parentheses, state along what axis I would like him to rotate, and at what speed, without forgetting to multiply everything with time dot delta time. For axis, I chose vector 3 dot forward, which means my character will rotate along the Z axis, which is the only axis you would really want your character to rotate along in a 2D space. Drag and drop my enemy script onto my red enemy circle, and type in some value for his rotation speed, you will see that when I press play, my character slowly rotates. Awesome! It's now time to get the enemy's line of sight up and running. To achieve this, we will use rays. So back in my update function, I'll create a raycast hit 2D variable and call it hit info. I'll set this equal to physics 2D dot raycast and in the parentheses state where my ray should start so I'll get it to start at my enemy's position and then I must state in which direction my ray should shoot out. I'll choose transform.right for the ray's direction. Lastly, I can give my ray a max distance, which is very useful for stealth games because you'll probably not want your enemies spotting your player from really far away. So I'll make a public float variable called distance and then plug in that distance variable after my ray's direction. We will of course set the value for this variable in the inspector. I'll now make an if statement checking whether the ray called hit info has collided with anything. If it has, so if hit info dot collider is not equal to null, then for now let's simply draw a red line in the scene view. To do so I'll use debug dot draw line and in the parentheses I'll need to type in the starting position of this line. Again, I'll choose the enemy's position, and I also must choose an end position for the line. I'll get my line to end at the point of contact of my ray and whatever it's collided with. In other words, hit info dot point. Lastly, I need to choose a color for my line. I'll make it red. If, however, the ray is not colliding with anything, 
then I'll also use debug.drawLine. Except this time, I would like my line to end at the enemy's current position, plus transform.write. This way my line will shoot out in the same direction as my ray, multiplied with distance. I'll get my line to turn green when it's not collided with anything. Note that these lines will only render in the scene view and will not be visible in the game view. Let's now head back to Unity. I'll set distance equal to 50 and then hit play. You'll now see a green line being drawn in the scene view. But this line does not turn red when in contact with the player or the walls. Now this is because our walls and player do not have any colliders on them, so the ray does not detect them. To fix this, I'll add a simple non-trigger 2D circle collider to my player and a 2D box collider to my walls. Chances are high you'll also want your enemy character to have a collider, so I'll also add a 2D circle collider to my enemy character. Pressing play you'll notice another problem. The ray is detecting the enemy's collider. We obviously don't want this. So I'll head back into Mono Develop and type physics2d.query start and colliders equal to false. Now the ray will no longer detect the enemy's collider, but it will detect the walls and player. Excellent. Let's now destroy our player when the ray comes in contact with him. To do so, I'll check whether what the ray has collided with has the player tag. If it does, then we know the ray has collided with the player character. And so I'll simply destroy whatever the ray has collided with, which obviously will be the player. So let's add the player tag to the player, press play, and of course, when the ray hits the player, or in the case of a stealth game, when the enemy has spotted the player, then a penalty will ensue. And there we go, the enemy's line of sight functionality is working. However, if I maximize my game view when pressing play, you'll see that without the visible line of sight, things feel a little quirky and unfair for the player. The question is, how can I get a cool looking line of sight in my actual game? You could, of course, create some graphics in Photoshop representing the direction which the enemy is facing. But this won't be very precise and won't clearly show the player that he is behind cover. What I'll be using in this tutorial is Unity's Line Renderer. This will easily let us replicate the look of the debug.draw line except it will actually render in the game view. So I'll create a new empty game object, call it line of sight, and add a line renderer component to it. I'll start by adding two positions to my line so we can easily see it and tweak its visuals. As you can see, the line is a flashy purple. This is because it doesn't have a material applied to it. To fix this, simply head over to material and add the sprite's default material. You can now tweak the line's color. I'll change the mode to fixed because I don't want any gradients and choose for now a red color. Lastly, I'll lower my line's width. We must now set the line's actual position via script, as well as its color, turning it red when the ray contacts something and green when not. So back in mono develop, I'll start by making a public variable of type line renderer called line of sight. We will drag and drop our line of sight game object inside this empty slot. We can now tweak all the line renderer settings via scripts. Now I always want the line to start at my enemy's position. So I'll type line of sight dot set position and in the parentheses type in zero because I want to set the starting position of my line and then I'll state the enemy's transform dot position. If my ray collides with anything, I want my line to end at the point of contact of my ray and whatever it has collided with. So I'll type line of sight dot set position and this time set its end position. So the position of index one 
equal to hit info dot point. In other words, the point of contact. If, however, the ray is not colliding with anything, then I'll simply get my line renderer shooting off in the same direction as the ray. If I now press play in Unity, you will see that my line almost behaves in the same way has our debug.draw line. All we must now do is change its color. So I'll create two new variables of type gradient, one called red color and the other green. So when my ray collides with something, I'll set my line's color gradient equal to the red color. And when it doesn't collide with anything, you guessed it, I'll want my line to be green. In the inspector, I'll make sure to correctly set up my gradient colors with a fixed mode and removing all transparency to the color. Now, if I hit play, I have an enemy that ominously scans the area looking for intruders. Awesome. And that will mark the end of this video. I hope you found it helpful and will be able to use or implement this into your own game projects. Now hitting the like and subscribe buttons would be absolutely awesome and really appreciated. You can also follow me on Twitter and join the Blackthorn Pro Discord server. Alright, have a great day. See you very soon for more game creation content. Cheers!